Tropical sprue is a gastrointestinal disease that results in malabsorption of nutrients in water. Just like other sprue diseases, like celiac sprue, which is more often known as celiac disease, in tropical sprue, the villi of the small intestine become flattened, but the exact cause of this isn't known. The biggest clue is that tropical sprue seems to mostly affect individuals living in the tropical regions of the world, like the Caribbean, India, and Southeast Asia. The most widely accepted theory is that an acute intestinal infection, which could be bacterial, viral, or protozoal, initially damages the intestinal lining, and this causes the first bit of inflammation. In response, the intestinal cells secrete enteroglucagon, which is a hormone that decreases intestinal motility. Decreased motility means that food's allowed to linger in the intestines for longer than usual. More food means more resources, so this sets the stage for a change in the normal bacterial flora, which leads to bacterial overgrowth. Bacterial overgrowth refers to the idea that some organisms begin to overpopulate and therefore dominate the bacterial ecosystem of the intestines. In tropical sprue, Klebsiella, E. coli, and Enterobacter end up becoming these dominant bacteria. These guys release toxic byproducts as they ferment the food that lingers in the gut, and these toxins can damage the intestinal lining, leading to more inflammation. Over time, all this chronic inflammation leads to villus atrophy, which is flattening of the villi that line the small intestine. Villi are important because they provide surface area and digestive enzymes necessary for nutrient absorption. Flattening of the villi reduces this surface area, which means less nutrients and water can be absorbed across the intestinal wall, which leads to malabsorption. This one means more food is left behind for the bacteria, which leads to more intestinal wall injury and inflammation. And two, the malabsorption also causes depletion of vitamin B12 and folate over time. Unfortunately, folate's needed to help maintain the integrity of the intestinal mucosa. So as levels fall, it also further contributes to the intestinal wall injury and inflammation. Tropical sprue typically affects adults, and the usual pattern is of a chronic disease with exacerbations or flare-ups from time to time. The most common symptoms are related to intestinal injury and malabsorption, and are diarrhea, abdominal pain, fatigue, weight loss, and dehydration. One complication that can result from malabsorption of vitamins like folate and vitamin B12 is megaloblastic anemia where the bone marrow produces large, immature red blood cells. The diagnosis of tropical sprue is usually made in individuals who have lived in the tropics and have long-standing gastrointestinal symptoms and malabsorption. Fat malabsorption can be investigated by doing a 72-hour stool collection test while on a prescribed diet. Also, though, carbohydrate malabsorption can be assessed using a D-xylose absorption test. Normally, if it's absorbed in the intestines, it gets into the bloodstream and ultimately gets filtered into the urine. If it's not absorbed, though, less eventually gets excreted in the urine. So these people end up with less D xylose in their urine. In addition, imaging techniques can also be used to help make a diagnosis. For example, endoscopy can be used to see villus atrophy. And a barium swallow might show intestinal wall thickening, which often happens with chronic inflammation. The ultimate gold standard, though, would be a tissue biopsy of the jejunum to directly visualize the intestinal inflammation in villus atrophy. Treatment for tropical sprue typically involves using antibiotics to reduce the bacterial overgrowth, and nutrition replacement to deal with specific deficiencies like folate and vitamin B12. Sometimes these treatments have to be given for up to a year because of the chronic nature of the problem. Alright, so to recap. Tropical sprue is a gastrointestinal disease that's thought to be the result of bacterial overgrowth, most commonly of Klebsiella, E. coli, and Enterobacter species. These bacteria release toxic substances as they ferment the food in the small intestines, which can lead to chronic inflammation and subsequent flattening of the small intestinal villi, which ultimately results in malabsorption and the related abdominal symptoms. Thanks for watching. You can help support us by donating on Patreon or subscribing to our channel or telling your friends about us on social media.